ones let's talk about some energy as we always love to talk about and let's see if we can bring an idea to creating an exercise for us to help us coping with the energy of deprivation so many of these deprivation signals are going off in our being and we're not even aware of it until we start to pay attention to what is making us feel depressed or feel depleted that feeling of being left out or isolated this energy has got to awaken now because we have been isolated because we've been separated so this energy of being outside of everything that is moving and happening feeling a, a deprivation that energy is talking to us loudly now so how do we be in this energy field when we're feeling deprived or feeling this deep sense of lack so it can either <clears throat> come in throat stuff it can either come in as a, a sense of inadequacy or a sense of inferiority when we are judging ourselves according to someone else or what they have or what they've done or what they've accomplished and we look at that and we say but then you know why aren't I getting to that point why aren't I showing up in that in that same way well remember we've said we've spoken about this so being the same as someone else means that you one of you is redundant we've got to be here for our own unique imprint we don't want to be showing up in the same way as someone else and yet the marker that the other person gives us is the thing that we kind of push ourselves towards. So if someone is a high achiever, especially in your family, and you all kind of look to that person as being this high achieving, amazing person, and everyone sort of um, putting their attention towards them and trying to be like them, or, being, or the siblings might be told, why can't you be more like and that leaves us again with that sense of lack, that sense of loss or deprivation or not being as good as, that sense of inferiority. We can see deprivation and this energy in so many places. We can see it in our environment where we don't have as much as someone else. And there's always going to be a scale of those who have and those who have abundantly and those who have very sparsely. There's always going to be that. But how do we hold ourselves in that space? There's always going to be someone who looks to be, appears to be better than you, coping better than you. It's all a facade, my angels. If we could only see into the real lives of people and understand that they are striving to achieve, striving to do well in their lives, because underneath that energy of striving is a deep sense of lack or loss or lack of purpose, lack of sense of self, lack of confidence. There is an energy of deprivation. So next time you see someone who's really pushing, pushing themselves to move ahead, who is very targeted in everything they're doing, just hold them with more love rather than the judgment hold them with love because you will probably find if you scratch just a little deep down that there is a deep wound there a poverty consciousness or a pain that has been handed on to them through their line we all feel deprivation in one way or another and we all deprive ourselves of the moments of happiness and the moments of delight because we think we should be doing something else rather than this. We don't allow ourselves to give to ourselves so that we can fill up that space. And we rely on everything around us to fill us up and to feel like, okay, because I'm doing this, then I'm an accomplishing, purposeful, wonderful person. But to be alone with yourself and to still feel yourself as being worthwhile it's a great challenge and especially for those who are getting older. I watch people in really tough situations where they are on their own, elderly people and there's nobody, children all overseas and it's a tough space to be. 
How do you be in that space? No longer the mother or the father, no longer the provider, no longer the one who is necessary. How do you still be in that place and not feel like your life is meaningless? We would like to, for each one of our own life journeys, start right now filling up our awareness of self, filling up the sense of who we truly are, so that we don't have to rely on anything outside of us to fill us up and to make us feel like our lives are worthwhile and that we are worthwhile. We want to fill up that space of lack, that void, that emptiness, and the only one who can fill it up is our own being. To sit with what it is that we are feeling when we are feeling the sense of deprivation. Just allow yourself to go in there and then ask yourself, what is this hollow? How is it resonating inside of this hollow? And what is this hollow asking me to fill it with? And if you're asking yourself to fill it with distractions, it's not the answer. You haven't found the answer. You're just trying to find a band-aid to pop on top of it. Sit a little deeper. What is this hollowness? What is this emptiness? What am I seeking? What is my soul yearning for? Keep going down and deeper and deeper and deeper into that space so that only you can find your truth. Nobody on this planet can give that to you, not one person. And if you do manage to live to a ripe old age, and if you do find yourself alone, you will know that you are not alone and that your life is full and meaningful because you are inside of your being and present in your life journey in all aspects of it. Sure, such a big subject. Let me know how you're feeling with this one, my darlings. And just observe, just observe and just start paying attention. Let's start opening up all these spaces of wound and starting to bring light and healing to them. So much love to you. Sending you the biggest hugs. Namaste. And thank you for you.